My name is Holly Jacobson, and I'm the executive director of Path with Art. Path with Art's mission is to help people transform their lives who, uh, from, through, creative through creative engagement as a path to stability and a bridge to community. Specifically, people who are living in or recovering from trauma, whether that trauma is, is caused by uh, mental health issues, homelessness, addiction, abuse, racism, racism, poverty, grief, or COVID-19, we know creative practice provides a new pathway forward, be it painting, poetry, or performance. And because we're based in Seattle, I think it's important for me to acknowledge that I am currently sitting on the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish and Duwamish people whose heritage, culture, and art we honor and celebrate. So to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month, every Tuesday and Saturday in May, we'll explore art's impact on mental health and resilience, how art transforms us, ourselves, and our communities. I'd like to give a shout out to all our sponsors and especially the presenting sponsor, Business Air, for believing in the power of art and the value of access for everybody. We're in the middle of our spring fundraising campaign and hope to raise some money for our online programming for the most vulnerable neighbors around us. Your support can make a difference. So if you're inspired, do donate. But most importantly, we hope to come together as community from London to Singapore to Seattle and use creative connection as a way to build bridges to each other during this time and hopefully beyond. Creative practice is an antidote for feelings of anxiety, stress, grief, but making art is more than a balm for our wounds. It helps us tap into the beauty and horror of the human experience. And that is why I am really excited to introduce to you our next guest, my dear friend, Leslie Jackson Chihuly. Leslie's the president and CEO of Chihuly Studios and Chihuly Workshop, which features the artistic work and vision of her husband, Dale. But Leslie's also a national advocate for destigmatizing mental health as part of McLean Hospital's Deconstructing Stigma campaign and a fervent supporter of access to the arts for society's most vulnerable individuals. I sit down six feet apart from Leslie at her and Dale's home in Seattle to discuss how creative practice and nature can provide us with resilience during anxious times. We'll then go live for some additional Q and A. So you can put your questions in the chat box and I'll, I'll read them out. Um, and we'll close with a really special performance by a poet, a path of art poet, Pam Winter. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to the lovely Leslie Chihuly, my friend and fellow Oki. Well, here we are. Um, welcome and thank you, Leslie, for taking the time out to talk to us in your beautiful backyard on a very rare, sunny Seattle day. Want to let everyone know we are six feet apart, properly socially distanced, um, as per the guidelines by our state, and I hope you stay that way too. Thanks. So let's, um, gee, where did we start? <laughs> we started, I met you at the Seattle Symphony. Yeah. That was pretty lovely. We were watching a Trimpen and Path of Art event when you were the board president of the Seattle Symphony. Yeah. Um, which you held for 12 years, making radical changes, I think, at the symphony, bringing the symphony's work out to the world. Yeah, it was a lot about thinking about the symphony's role in the community, and to walk into the lobby at the invitation of Pamela Eeks, because this organization called Path with Art had been doing a project with the symphony and with Trimpen, I didn't even know what was happening, and I was invited by our mutual friend Pam Eeks to come and watch this uh, performance. And I was moved beyond belief, and I remember sitting there recording the whole thing, because to know that 
that some of your students of all ages had been working with Trimpen for I don't know how many weeks or months, that they had made their own instruments, that they had participated in writing their own piece, and that they were performing it in our Benaroya Hall to me was just the uh, building out of a, of a huge of a huge dream and, and really the way symphonies should be working with the community to really bring people who have sort of the most need in and who may be coming from some of the most hopeless places into art and into music and into inspiration. Yeah. So it so touched that's... my heart so deeply because you know no matter what I um, what I see happening in some of the students from Path with Art, it really related very much to me in terms of my own childhood. And things might have looked good on the exterior, but I was really coming out of a really tough environment with a lot of addiction and mental illness. And I might have worn nicer clothes, but I was still a survivor of a really tough um, home environment. And it was really music and art and writing that gave me uh, a path toward healing and creativity and hope in my own life. You actually spoke about that at a Path with Art event once and it moved many, many people. And I know you've, you've gone around the country and, mm -hmm. and really helped advocate for destigmatizing mental health to work with McLean. But tell me, what, can you unpack that for me a little bit? How did you, how did creativity bring you that resilience and, and why did you choose to, to be an advocate for mental health? And yeah, well I think that, you know, growing up, my family was musical and I think arts and music was just part of my, um, part of the DNA in my family, but it was the relationship I had with some of my teachers, not unlike how the Path with Art teachers work with their students that became a th really a therapeutic kind of relationship because I could say anything to my writing and my English teacher. I could say anything to my piano teacher and I could, um, I could walk out of there with something that I could do, practice the piano or sing along with the piano or um, I was really involved in dance as well. So I, I was able to sort of express myself through those creative avenues and I felt very very blessed to be able to do that but also I recognize that vulnerable connection between myself and a mentor it's not just doing the art it's really the relationships that you develop along the way where you build that safety and uh, it took me a long time in my life before I was ready to more publicly share some of my experience with mental health for example my mother being um, undiagnosed, untreated bipolar, uh, my father being alcoholic and depressed, um, being a child of divorce, being a child of um, trauma, that um, as an adult I started to realize I could share my story and that it would be unburdening for me but that it would also be helpful to others and I, I didn't really understand the full power of that until you invited me to speak and I realized that I would be talking amongst a group of people who were going to be telling some of the most, you know, horrible stories really and making themselves vulnerable in front of an audience and it was a real challenge for me to say, well, I need to do that too if I'm going to show up in this space. I need to tell a little bit more of the truth about my own story. Yeah, I think you're doing that. That advocacy has was has really given everyone permission, really regardless of circumstance, to be vulnerable and share their stories. So your leadership in that arena is, I mean, much appreciated by our community, but I know by folks who are touched by similar issues. And I don't really know a family who's not. Right. Um, That's the other thing. Yes. <laughs> it's a great leveler, but it's also so common. And the thing that, I think the thing that separates us and keeps us in shame and limits us around our own creativity and that that can be manifested in any aspect of our work lives but it's that it's that aloneness in it it's that inability to express it that locks us in the minute we're able to share it and express it in some way with even one other human being you know um, it changes the whole the whole path I think going forward yeah I like to use a quote um, from George Brock the cubist painter art is a wound turned into light and I do think it's that bringing things out of the shadows that you talk about 
And, you know, when you speak about your mom and it wasn't discussed then, it wasn't talked about then, there wasn't a label for you to understand that as a child. That's because we didn't talk about mental health issues then. Right. <laughs> we just didn't talk about them. Yeah, we just didn't even understand really what they were or how to diagnose them or how to treat them. And the truth is we still, we still don't have a perfect uh, story in terms of, of, of treatment. But I do think that community and relationship and intimacy is such a strong part of anyone's successful journey in getting through mental illness or addiction or just living with it. And, you know, I look at my own husband, 26 years that we've been together, and I just have profound respect for the fact that he lives a lot of his, a lot of days and a lot of months out of his life in a, uh, in a depressed state. But he has that innocence and that creativity in him that continues to, to come out and continues to keep him, him here and grounded on, on the earth doing his thing. He's almost 78 years old. So I talked to him this morning before we started chatting about about resilience and, and about creativity, and he mentioned um, courage, you know, he mentioned bravery. And I think, you know, in his somewhat quiet way at times, he came through that automobile accident where he lost the sight in his eye, could have lost his life, was never able to blow glass the same way again. And I said, well, what, what kept you going? And I think so much of it has been, well, not only the relationships that we have, community around us, but he always had another idea, something he was working on, something that was generative, that was propelling him forward that he wanted to try. And that spirit of, of um, exploration is still, is still there. And what keeps you going now during this time of COVID, which is strange for everyone around the yeah. world? I don't think there's been anything that's been so global, so profoundly life altering and, and without any knowledge of what the future looks like. We, yeah. we can make our predictions, we can make our hopes, right. we can try and put things in place, but what keeps you going right now? Well, I mean, honestly, it is such a, we talk about triggers, it's such a trigger and there are many moments and hours of the day where I feel great, mainly because I'm getting out into nature. I'm taking forest baths as often as possible. I'm going out and just walking and I have one one friend out on the Kitsap Peninsula that I mostly do my walking with. And frankly, there's something very, very simple and very grounding in just having someone to walk with and to have a laugh with and to tell stories with where you really sort of forget about all of this for a few minutes. But then you come back into it and it's very jarring and you, you know, you do what you can to keep yourself centered and I think that's so important. I'm going back to all of my oldest spiritual practices to try to keep myself in a positive place so that I can help others and one of the things is to just not watch that much news. I want to be informed, I want to know what's happening but there's a certain point where I just feel this weight on my shoulders and the more it weights me down, you know, just hearing about numbers of cases or numbers of death the more it keeps me from maybe making a phone call and reaching out to someone or doing some writing or sitting down at the piano or whatever that is. So I think we have to just really dig deep in our own well and our own reservoir of um, creativity, groundedness, but also in our relationships to stay here, to know that we really are doing this together. And I've reached out to you quite a bit in this and I actually, I'm very happy for the fact that with your support that I've gone back into my desire to do more writing and um, we've become writing buddies and that I'm kind of taking my path with art course with you and holding myself accountable to that and it's been really incredibly profound and I felt such a such a support in, in doing them. You and Dale support Path of Art and our students and their artistic journeys and I know you support other at communities, the Hilltop Artists, mm -hmm. which is a really great yeah. community, and the Veterans Glass Blowing. We have a Veterans program now too, you know. Right. What, what makes you and Dale, like why did you choose to be um, philanthropists for folks who typically don't have access? Why do you, I mean it might seem like yeah. an obvious question, but I wonder. Um, you know, I just, I've talked to our son about this, that you know, this we didn't probably ever use the word philanthropy. That was, 
probably a fancy word we didn't use, but but giving and being involved in community and helping others was just something that was a value system that I think Dale and I both came into our relationship with. We, we both had that, but I was always really inspired by his his level of empathy and I can look at his own story and see where he might have gained that empathy but he can he always cared about the vulnerable population he really cared a lot about older people and started the organization called seniors making art which ended up sort of moving into a new form and really you are that new form because he felt that you know so much of the focus in in arts and in giving is focused on kids, very important, but he, he saw this treasure in our older population and, want, and realized that they have the wisdom and time to be, able to, do, to be able to do art, to be able to paint, and he wanted to provide these classes free of charge you know, for as long as possible. But he also started Pilchuck almost 50 years ago, which was really about getting a bunch of artists together and exploring a new material which had you know doing doing things that had never been done and building their own tree houses and building a campus and and now I am very busy we are very busy trying to help Pilchuck support itself through this because we're coming on this 50th anniversary mm -hmm. we had lots of plans for campaign and lots of plans for celebration also Dale's 80th birthday uh, coming up in 2021 and they're having to cancel all of their classes right now and glass blowing itself is a really, it's a tough thing to do with social distance. You're sometimes sharing blowpipes, you're sweating, you're breathing, you're really close to one another. I never realized how fragile, you know, the glass blowing practice really would be in a, in a time like this. So we're trying to innovate and figure out new ways to do that. But I'm just, uh, it's almost like a, a fear of extinction. You know, you just, if, if in a time like this you see uh, so many things getting closed, shot, canceled. You know, we've got to find a new way to do things so that we can keep that spirit going and keep that education going and give people hope that maybe next summer we'll be able to have our classes or yeah. some other cool virtual way of doing things. But we need each other. I feel that we also need this human contact. I mean, even sitting here with you is amazing. Six feet apart. I miss seeing you. I miss, you know, I miss seeing friends and, and being together like this. And I think we get so much out of it and it keeps us, keeps us going. Yeah, I know for our students, because of your support and your ability to connect them through, you know, to support our online programming where people have been really isolated and stuck in their rooms. Yeah. yeah. Tremendous, tremendous. Even seen on screens. We might complain about yeah. the constant Zoom calls, but for some people it's a lifeline right now. Yeah. To have that community. And, um, and creative practice. And how did you get just the computers and the connectivity to people to be able to do that? Well, we're really lucky in that our model, we, we purchased the computers with support of, of some friends, mm -hmm. such as you guys and, and some others, and um, and just researched internet access and then delivered them through our social service partners and a group of volunteers. Really cool fun fact is that we had uh, some, we asked for a group of tech volunteers or uh -huh. for tech volunteers and people signed up from Texas to Virginia to Chicago. That's so great. People really want to come together and help and I think that's it is easy to get overwhelmed by that very primal fear of extinction or you know um, it's scary. Yeah. There's no question about it. But we're also having to learn and we talked about this a little bit earlier mm -hmm. how to be fluid. Yeah. In a time that it's, right. That it's, we're, we're supposed to know everything that's going to happen. We work so hard to control our lives and we have yeah. to stay fluid. And, and that in itself is, is a fear to overcome and learn. Right. And artists, people who've practiced art or have any kind of uh, ongoing practice with it, understand how to access different parts of the brain. And you can come up with amazing ideas and solutions to things if you are open to both of those sides of the brain being at work yeah. and being stimulated, yeah. which drawing and painting and writing and music do. If you could say one thing to the folks who are tuning in about your encouragement for creative practice, what would it be? One statement. Well, I think, you know, with everything going on around us and all of the information coming in, I think 
my message is to really make your make yourself a priority you know you I think you have to start we always talk about the old life mask thing well now we've got the masks we've got to, <laughs> we've got to put on our own masks our own life masks first and we need to feed our souls whatever that is and it's very simple it doesn't it's not a it's not a fancy thing if it's it, like you said if it's cooking something if it's taking a walk if it's if it's drawing even if you don't think you're a good drawer just just do it anything to get your brain loosened up and to focus some time on you every day and some for some people that's meditation for me i have ants in my pants so my meditation looks a little different it's more walking hiking meditation in the forest but whatever that is to 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 fill your cup and fill your soul each and day and your new writing practice and my writing <laughs> practice was there anything else you want to say about creativity and resilience or no, just that I think we have to keep we have to keep doing this with each other. It's going to be um, it's already been a long road to hoe. We've all been through a lot. We've all been through a lot of trauma. We've all been through a lot of change. Um, and that was I think, before COVID. I think right? it's just going to keep going. Something. It's interesting how some things really feel like they're slowing down, and other things are accelerating. And so, where are we in that continuum, and how do we remain present for for one another? Thank you so much, Leslie. Before we go, I, I want to, I don't know if it's sanitary to give this to you now, but oh. it's a book, uh, just one of a Path of Art notebook. It reminded me of Dale's work. I love it. Fall. It's beautiful. And then this is a book of poetry because we're writing buddies. Thank uh, you. Written by one of our poets who I really adore, so. I look forward to reading that. Whatever. The yeah. years locusts have eaten. That's that's Rocky barking away there. Oh, hi, Rocky. Rocky. Rocky Come here. wants to say hi. Wants to say goodbye? Want to say goodbye to everybody, Rocky? Rocky! He's hiding behind the table. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks so much. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, uh oh. Whoa, are we here? Technology. Hey, you're here. Now I can hear you. No. You're still muted. Can you hear me now? Now, now, now I can. Okay, let's start. Take it from the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been having fun with technology today. Uh, Leslie and I, and so um, thanks for bearing with us. Um, I think everyone's kind of giving each other a little pass these days, so I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate you being here tonight, Leslie. Thank you so much. Well, again, you just, you challenged me and you're so courageous and you're getting over all of these humps to connect with, connect with your wonderful, our wonderful community at Path With Art. So I thought I can get over the hump of my nervousness and technology fears and, and be here with you. So thanks for pulling me up. Thank you. Yeah, we, um, we have, I was watching the chat during your video, the, the Facebook chat. And one thing that I think is important to just share with you is that the comment about forest baths was very popular. People okay. really like it. Yeah. I don't remember who I stole that from, but I love the, I love the idea and the experience of it. Oh yeah, and you know, <laughs> science has shown that art rewires your brain from trauma, but there are two things that rewire your brain from trauma, two things, let me put it on camera, um, and that is nature and art. So trauma creates certain grooves in your brain and rewires your brain one way, and art and nature unwind that and help take you forward. We have some questions here. Um, so you ready to answer some? I can try. Okay. Hopefully people will be kindly see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many questions. Um, a question from Jill. Why do you think there is so much stigma associated with mental illness? 
and how did you break through talking about it? That's a good question. I think, I think there's stigma around anything that we can't that we can't understand. And when somebody has a mood disorder, you experience them so differently at different times, and it, it can be scary. And um, we all in our society have sort of grown up thinking we're supposed to behave and be a certain way in society and with our friends and in school. And if you have a mental illness, you might not show up, definitely are not going to show up the way other people show up. And so that fear can sort of be a, you know, a recurring and a reinforcing part of the trauma that you don't get the love and, and the response and the support that you need from the people around you. And you go perhaps deeper into that mental illness and, and it just the cycle continues until you can really understand it yourself and get the support for, for it. And I think, you know, you asked the other part of the question was how did I start talking about it? And I think in the beginning it was really survival because I could have, through my own depression and trauma, I could have taken my life. I could have become a raging alcoholic. I could have done a lot of things and I could just not be here. But I felt from a very, you know, young age in my teenage years that I had a choice that I needed to make about how I wanted to live and how I didn't want to follow the path of my, of some of the family patterns. So I started getting help and I started getting therapy and I started talking with friends, but it's been a long journey of talking about it and getting that kind of help. And I'm just developing new muscles even now in terms of how to talk about the things that scare me, even in the moment when trauma or fear gets triggered, sometimes we want to pull back into the old ways. And so the journey is really to create the safety and relationships, such as even as I have with you and others that, you can take that chance and tell the truth about how you're feeling and what your fears are. Practice. Practice, practice. I've got an, uh, thank you for that. That was a lovely answer. I have um, another question, which is, it references your, um, where you talk about your teachers in the video. Mm -hmm. And wanted to know if you can describe a specific experience you had with a teacher or mentor that helped you learn how to express yourself? Yeah, I think, um, well, I go back to my piano teacher in grade school and junior high. And, you know, unlike the teachers you hear about who wrap you over the knuckles or shame you into submission, she was just very kind and very present. And I went into her world and over to her home to have my lessons. And I just remembered feeling safe it was a really positive environment and she made me want to work hard but she didn't do it through through shaming me or through making me feel badly about how much i had practiced or not and she was just a super kind person i knew that she she must know what was going on in my life because she could see it coming out in me and my lessons and and some of the stories i was telling her but i just i don't know if she will ever know or even where she is or if she's still with us but huge impact for me and just the contrast in her ordered, kind, quiet home versus what I was coming from. Lovely, lovely. Um, teachers make a big impact. We are, we know that from our path with art teachers who have sometimes the longest relationships with our artists um, more than anyone else in their lives. Uh, since we're writing buddies, and I and I gave you that book, I wanted to introduce you to the author Pam Winter, who is here with us tonight. I asked her to be here and possibly share a poem or two. So I'm really looking forward to introducing you Great. to Pam. Hey. Pam looks to be. Swall it's swallowed up by a big black box. Um, uh oh. Technology. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> Can you at least hear um, me? So no. um, I know you enjoyed reading the book, The Year of the Locust. Yes, I have my copy here, by the way. Um, and I know she was looking forward to reading a poem to you. 
uh, but perhaps we will, I will see if she doesn't come in. Um, we'll have to, I'll read one for her. All right. Okay. Okay. Pam, I'm going to read your poem if you can hear us. The tragedy of being human is that we've made God in the image of ourselves, a great mythical character, the big man in the sky, judge appointed, slayer flying on wings of punishment, a god of vengeance, of all the toy soldiers trying to win a battle with life. The body is just a cloak, a middleman of darkness who cherishes a temple of decay, is trapped in a cyclone of more and sprints around a track of insecurity. We're on a dual path of life, sleep wake cycle of time, a dimmer switch of forgetting turns, shadows on high, but just within reach is a radical switch of clarity. Once flipped, a beacon of memory shines on, clues to solve a mystery. Imagine a flicker of flame that glowed in the dark before the big bang. This is who we were before the explosion made night and day. Pam Winter. So beautiful. And we had such a, a wonderful practice session with Pam before this began. And I I had a chance to ask her a couple questions about her, her practice and how poetry and art has helped her create a different world or show up differently in the world. And she had some wonderful responses to that. So apparently the Facebook folks can hear Pam. They can't see oh, her. Great. They can oh. hear her. So Pam, do you want to read the next poem? Sure. How to be in the world. Instruction manual. How to be in the world. Suck it up. Take a long, shallow breath. Hold it in. Hold it in. Don't breathe. Don't let go. Now put on your armor, thick with shine. Plaster a smile on your face and say it's all good. Even when you're dying inside, especially when your toes are torn inside out. Join in, act as if, pretend. The cultural delusion that you're going somewhere, being someone, arriving someplace, actually means something. Because who you really are, your divinity, has no purchasing power in a Western modality. Or is it morality? You can't see me, right? Thank you, Pam. Um. We are going to be asking Pam, since everyone can hear her, if she can create a, a prompt for everyone. We've been asking folks to give our audience a prompt to help them in their creative practice and inspire them to make art for the week. Pam, can you give a prompt for us? I know, I think I asked you beforehand, hopefully. Sure, yeah, we're in this time of pause of, um and digital breakdown <laughs> so i would say what would you regret not doing in this time of pause okay thank you pam i'll have to read about it later <laughs> but um but i also want to thank you leslie um, thank you so much for being here in spite of all our technology problems and glitches. Um, I know when we tested out earlier, it worked perfectly, but this is how we have to go. We have to stay fluid right now, right? I just admire you for taking this on in such a short period of time and just making the effort to bring us together. It means so much to me. And thank I know you. it does to everyone else. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I know you're very inspiring to not just me, but to many others. Thanks for giving everyone permission to be just themselves. Really appreciate Love it. You. <laughs> Thank you.
So um, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, I, I'm i sorry about our technical glitches. I'm glad you could see and hear Pam. And um, Pam, if you can hear me, thank you so much for being here, too, and sharing your beautiful work. We will bring you back again. I, I think we will be sharing and learning um, in this format more and more as we go along. So um, I appreciate I appreciate your willingness to join us today and um, and speak your truth and share your beautiful work. Uh, now I need to make a little pitch as to why we're raising funds. Um, first of all, thanks all of you for joining us. But the reason we're raising funds is during the best of times, Catholic art students, artists come to us to combat isolation and connect to community. And COVID stopped all that. It took that away for many of our over 900 participants. So our amazing program team decided we weren't gonna let people suffer in silence and, and train teaching artists to teach online and turned all our programming online and got students like Pam and others to connect via the internet. And for those who didn't have accessibility, we got them tablets like Leslie and I are talking about and internet connectivity. And so now people are reconnected because the point is, is to connect and create something and, and, and share your voice. And so any support you give us will help keep folks connected to our choir and poetry classes, painting and acting via these mediums. And when we're able to get back together uh, and through regular mediums again, and, um, and it, it really changes lives. So if you can donate, that's fantastic. I appreciate it. Uh, you can donate through Facebook, you can text to donate and, um, Thanks to a generous donor tonight, an anonymous generous donor, we have a match fund for tonight's donations. So tonight only, it's more of a challenge, your donation of 250 and above will be doubled. And any donation of 1,000 and above will be tripled. So please, if you can give, do. And if you had a friend invite you to don donate, definitely donate on their page. And um, mostly, Thanks for being with us. Thanks for us as we stumbled through our technical difficulties. Thanks for listening to us as we shared about the importance of creativity and self-care and kindness to each other. Um, next evening, we're gonna feature a special guest. Dave Matthews will be uh, joined by a path of art composer, Rob DeYoungen. Um, that'll be amazing and rock. And this Saturday, we have a special flower arranging class with London Plains, Catherine Anderson. So join us Saturday at 11 PST and Tuesday at 7 p.m. PST, wherever you are, um, at pathofart.org, hashtag art transforms us. Thanks so much. Be safe. Don't be safe with your art, though. Be free with your art. But be safe with yourself. Be well in all the ways. Thanks. Because what we lost was an amazing conversation that happened in our flawless rehearsal of Pam Winter, the author of the book that I gave Leslie and Leslie herself. I really wanted to get these two women together. Um, Pam is a resilience hero of mine. So I'm just like Leslie. So let's meet Pam and Leslie. Nice to see you again. <laughs> there we are. Here we are. Digital, we can do it again. <laughs> Redo. That's right. So back together. Yeah. Thanks to both of you. And, and um, I, you were going to read a poem to us, Pam, and I'd really rather hear the poem from you, not from me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll really jump good. right in. Great. I'll stand out. <laughs> yep. Instruction manual. How to be in the world. 
suck it up, take a long, shallow breath, hold it in, hold it in, don't breathe, don't let go. Now put on your armor, thick with shine, plaster a smile on your face and say it's all good, even when you're dying inside, especially when your toes are torn inside out. Join in, act as if, pretend. The cultural delusion that you're going somewhere, being someone, arriving someplace actually means something. Because who you really are, your identity, has no purchasing power in our Western modality. Or is it morality? That's an incredible poem. I love hearing it again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciated what you said about take the taking the stigma out of mental illness. That was powerful for me because I've had so much shame around stigma around mental illness. I try to hide, like I said in the poem, it's plaster a smile on my face and say it's all good. So you bringing it out is to mainstream is feels important, helpful. I really, I really appreciate that. And in your poem, I hear you talking about how you have been in the world when you've been in your shame place and how you want to be in the world and how we all want to be in the world as our authentic selves living with mental illness, but also gathering support around that in terms of being being who we need to be. I wonder how has your creative practice and the act of writing helped you create a different world and create a different way for you to be in the world? Well, it's taken my life out of hiding. I have a voice, uh, a voice I never dreamed I could have. Um, I felt squashed a lot of my life. And um, I was thinking about this and specifically with Path With Art, sometimes I, and I don't wanna over dramatize this, but I'm gonna say this. Um, I see my life as sort of pre Path With Art and post path with art and before pre I struggled and didn't have a lot of bright spots in my life and had that mask on and swirled around in the yuck. And then post path with art, it's been sort of a jumping off place where I've had a voice where I found myself through writing and another dramatic statement become alive. And while I still have issues and that come up regularly, I, I have a jumping off place and I know that those issues aren't all there is. Well, it seems you have a bit more freedom in how to, to be and to speak and to share from that vulnerable place. Um, and it's so meaningful to me and I know everyone who has heard you speak in public to go from that very private uh, personal work that you've done to being able to share that out into the world. And I, I really appreciate the new friendship I, I look forward to having with you as I think we're, we're all doing this work together in our different ways. Yeah. But I wonder if you might think about reading another poem for us. Sure. I, um, so I'd like to, I, who, would have thought that I would have written a book of poetry or that I would have ever stood on stage and being out there with me. I mean, you know, in front of sometimes hundreds of people, it's a, a life I've never dreamed of happening. So, um, or having, so, so yes, I'll read another poem. Thank you. Great. The Big Bang. The tragedy of being human is that we've made God in the image of ourselves. A great mythical character, the big man in the sky. Judge appointed, flayer flying on wings of punishment. A God of vengeance, 
of all the toy soldiers trying to win a battle with life. The body is just a cloak, a middleman of darkness who cherishes a temple of decay, is trapped in a cyclone of more and sprints around a track of insecurity. We're on a dual path of life, sleep-wake cycle of time, a dimmer switch of forgetting turns shadows on high, but just within reach is a radical switch of clarity. Once flipped, a beacon of memory shines on clues to solve a mystery. Imagine a flicker of flame that glowed in the dark before the Big Bang. This is who we were before the explosion made night and day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pam. You're such a strong writer. And I think that, you know, that poem was written before COVID and it has a lot of relevance now as we're trying to figure out, go back to that flame and we've cut out the noise and we're just with ourselves and um, each other and trying to figure out what is essential business for ourselves. Mm -hmm. when we come back, what does it look like? I. Um, we could reimagine it, right? So mm -hmm. I really appreciate both of you um, as strong women, as writers, as friends, and and just want to thank you for speaking up on behalf of Mental Health Awareness Month and on behalf of the work we do here at Path of Art. And I have um, just a lot of appreciation for both of you for that. Pam, we're asking each of our guests to do to suggest a creative prompt. And um, Leslie gave us many in the video, but do you have a creative prompt you would like to share to inspire others and as we encourage them to make something, write something, paint something, dance it out, whatever, what's the prompt you would like them to think about? Yeah. yeah, I've been wondering a lot about what would I, or what would you, regret not doing during this time, during our grand pause that we're having? I think we'll remember this forever. And what would you regret not doing during it? That's an excellent prompt. I think it kind of, um, that's an excellent prompt. And uh, I appreciate that. What would you regret not doing during this time, this pause that we're in. So thanks again to both of you. I really appreciate you being here. I would regret our not doing this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the leap, Polly, for you and yeah. the organization to create this safe space and a new way to be together during this time where we can feel so alone. Yeah, we have to. We have to um, try new things right now. And, and that's the what creative we, process, whoops. The no. creative process must continue. <laughs> Indeed, thank you. Yeah, no, I think the creative process will be our salvation, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.